Hi, we're going to talk about the design principles today, and I really want to help you make your own illustrated poster. So the goal is that when you're finished, you'll have your own version that looks something like this, and it will address or bring to life each one of the eight design principles. And you can use this as a reference tool anytime you need to refresh your memory or look back at what each one of them means when you're talking about or writing about art, peer art, masterworks, um, or even your own pieces. So let's tackle this. For starters, um, you either want to have a paper that's already got the lines drawn. Maybe you'll get one from your teacher. Or, you know, it can be so simple as you're going to take a piece of white copy paper or sketch pad paper, and you're going to draw a great big plus sign on it. Then simply take your ruler, and you're going to make a great big X. So you're dividing this rectangular piece of paper like you would a pizza and it will have eight triangular sections or pizza slices, one for each one of the design principles. Okay, moving forward, I made a finished product with color and illustrations that really mean something to me and explain what each of these means, but you're going to make your own. So while you can draw along with me, and I'm gonna reference back to this many times, um, I encourage you to make your own illustrations that mean something to you. So let's start first with balance, okay? Balance is about equal visual weight. And so kids frequently wanna draw scales like the scales of justice. But visual balance is really to being able to divide something into three separate types, okay? For starters, we have radial balance and radial balance is any type of balance that spins out from a central axis. So you can think of something like this snowflake that I've drawn, or you can think of a spider web with all the lines shooting out, or a pinwheel, or this orange with its separate sections. You can also um, go to things like a radial tire and think of the spokes that are in a radial tire. Another type of balance that a lot of us are familiar with, probably from math class, is symmetry. And so I drew something as simple as a heart and made it the same on both sides. Your illustration needs to bring it to life for you, not be something that's super complex. It does, however, need to be neat because your notes are only going to be able to help you if you can quickly grab them and glean the information from them. So in this illustration, I actually drew a bird, kind of a dove, and I made sure that I did the drawing with a symmetrical perspective on that. The third type of balance is asymmetry. And so I drew something that was pleasing to my eye because it is still visually balanced. I have this flower, but it's not exactly the same on both sides. So what you really wanna be thinking of boys and girls is something that is like still attractive to you. So I have this eye with the tear duct, but it's not exactly the same top and bottom or right and left. It might be pleasing to look at. And so we think of it as having a sense of balance, but yet I can't cut it in half or cut it uh, and compare the top and the bottom. So these are three types of balance or equal visual weight. Let's move on to proportion. Proportion is all about the size relationship of one object to another. So in this illustration, I purposely made this great big bunny rabbit. And then I put it with this smaller, less detailed drawing of a city. And I used my ruler to keep things nice and neat. Okay, for this drawing, I'm going to show accurate proportion. This drawing was about, you know, kind of using proportion to be funny or, or creates a sort of like surreal, humorous look. This one, you actually see me using the proportion correctly. And so I have the horizon line where the earth meets the sky. And the road as it's coming towards us is really big. And then it gets smaller, smaller, smaller as it goes back toward, some of you might know this as the vanishing point. Here I have these clouds drawn, and as I go to add more clouds, they should get smaller as it goes down. The reason being, we want it to look like things are fading off into the distance or into the horizon. And so by making the clouds get smaller as I go down, I'm using them in correct proportion to create a realistic landscape. Same if I was going to add hills. I need the hills in the back to look smaller or less detailed. And that way I'm using the proportion of them to try to create depth. I could also shade this, making things really, really vibrant up close and fading, fading, fading as they go back. 
Let's move on to variety, our next design principle. Here I've drawn a variety of stars. Variety is about lots of different types of something. And so what you're looking at here is a five-pointed star, a star of David, a shooting star, and more like a star burst. For the purposes of this illustration, I thought, well, what else could I make a wide variety of? I could have a variety of potato chips. I could have a variety of sports equipment. Maybe I could do like a skateboard and then do like a baseball bat. And then I could also have like a fishing pole. They're all sports equipment, but they're each different. For this, I actually was doing a variety of fish. And so I could add one more fish in here. Um, maybe I've got this sort of like dolphin-like fish. And I'm just drawing it for the sake of this illustration. It's kind of a goofy looking dolphin. It's more of a cartoon, really. And so I've got one more type of fish. Okay, let's go on to our next one. Our next design principle, movement. Movement is visual movement, or there is actual movement. And so you can think about something like a mobile that twists in the wind, and that's going to have actual movement. It's literally going to move in front of you. The other type that's more commonly used is visual movement. And so I drew this ribbon kind of twisting and our eye follows it. That's what we mean when we say visual movement. And the ribbon looks like maybe it's gotten caught on the pine needles of the cactus. For this drawing, I wanted to make it look like this basketball was flying through the air, right? So after I drew the ball and I drew the net, maybe I want to add like a little bit of an action line. And then maybe I want to do the backboard. Now, the fun thing about drawing the backboard is that if I make a little bit of depth with it, our eye will also kind of move down the backboard. So here I am adding these lines in the background. And we can't help it. Our eye naturally wants to follow those lines. It's why street signs will have things like an arrow, because your eye naturally wants to follow it. So hopefully this is looking like that basketball is going in and it's like a little swoosh action. Let's move down to emphasis now. Emphasis is about making something stand out. So in this case, I drew these different planets, but I made one larger. Now, I might even take the opportunity to color these and maybe I'll make the earth and the moon and the sun very muted, but then I'll make Saturn really vibrant, rich color. Let's look at my illustration for emphasis on the completed poster. For this drawing, I drew all these different cups of ice cream. Maybe I was getting hungry. I'm not sure. But this is a dish of ice cream. This is like a cake cone. This is the sugar cone that always seems to drip at the end. What I did, though, was I emphasized or made this one stand out by adding sprinkles to it and hot fudge and the cherry on top. And then you can look at the cone and you can see the waffle in the waffle cone or the sugar cone and it has the drip. And so I made that one stand out more by its size, by its color, by its texture and by its level of detail. The art elements really work with the design principles. They are the organizers. The design principles organize those art elements like color, shape, and value. Let's move over to Unity. This is a really abstract design principle, and so it's hard to represent visually. Unity is often created when something overlaps or when there's a color or a color family that repeats, thereby tying separate things together. So what you're looking at is a series of initials. You see Z and T, and J, and K, and S, and D, and C. Those letters are very spread out in our alphabet. But by overlapping them, they're all touching each other. That kind of tied them together. And then I used warm colors. In this illustration, I thought, no initials this time. Let's go with some leaves. And so you see these leaves that are touching each other. And so if I added another one down here, if I wanted to add maybe even a different type of leaf, I can do that, but I need to keep in mind that we should have a sense of overlap or I should use a similar color scheme. And so this maple leaf that I've added, it's touching, but also maybe I could use all these beautiful fall colors to sort of tie all those together. Let's move over to rhythm. Rhythm, again, is very abstract. And so what I'd like to kind of introduce to you is that rhythm is when something repeats in a way that moves our eye. 
So